So standard deconstruction. So essentially when we lesson plan, the first thing we do is we choose our standards. So your standards audit was about you getting to know the standards, problematizing them, good at looking at them with a critical eye, reflecting on your personal relationship with subject matter and those standards specifically. So now what I'm hoping that you're going to do is start honing in on what you want your lesson to be. Um, because we're in this weird virtual world um, I would like you to please make sure that you are including some sort of a virtual or tech tool within your teaching of this lesson. Whether you do a Kahoot quiz, uh, whether you have a Google form, whether you, I don't know, whatever it is, but something digital. Let's pretend that you are creating a lesson for this virtual teaching world, okay? I understand you've not done this before, neither have I. The teachers in our classrooms right now are in the same position. Um, and so with that, I want you to know I will be flexible with you. I'm not gonna be as, um, as I would be in, in previous semesters because I'm recognizing that we're all working within a new space here. But the thing that doesn't change is the fact that we have to base our lessons on the standards, right, as teachers. So what I'm asking you to do is, and this should be unlocked so that you can see it, um, is that you are going to, I, I don't know about this due date, so is that correct? Did I make the correct, let me check the calendar real quick. Bear with. Bear with. Where's the calendar? My darn calendar. Oh, here it is over here. Don't freak out, Dr. Drake. Okay, so I have this currently set for October 13th. Let me see, how's that look? Yep, so next Tuesday. So I'm hoping you come to class with this next Tuesday that you've done it and you're ready to go. I think that's fair. Um, I know you can do it. So here's how it works. You are going to select four subject matter standards for your intended lesson. Um, you are going to not just aim, but you need to include one ELD standard, okay? That goes for everybody. Um, when you finish your credential, multiple subject teachers, uh, we have SADAI in, built into our credential. Um, that means that we are actively um, constructing lessons that um, serve our students who are emergent bilinguals or English language learners. And so those uh, standards should always be included. Um, let's see here. And then that means that you have three other standards that you can choose from any subject matter you want. Um, so it could be ELA, English language arts, uh, it could be math, it could be, the, the sky's the limit, okay, With, when, when it comes to subject matter. I will encourage you to take a look at the health standards. Um, I feel like the health standards don't get enough attention um, and they are really great. There's a lot of, um, whether it's uh, talking about gangs, whether it's uh, talking about uh, environment mm -hmm. recycling and understanding the impacts of the environment on our own health. Um, there's mental health in the health standards. There are uh, standards that address interpersonal relationships and communication with other students. Um, and so also just like mental health in general, um, Gen Z and millennials were really anxious people it's not been easy, right? <laughs> since 2001, like since Columbine happened, I've been like, ooh, um, and, or no, that was 2000. So just acknowledging that we live, especially young people today live with a lot of anxiety and uncertainty. And so um, highlighting mental health in your lessons is something that I would encourage if you are interested. Um, so here basically what you can do is you can take a look at these slides. They should be uh, able for you to open them. Let's see. I just try to open those slides like um, right before you started and it said that the slides were locked. I can see what you're looking at now, but this says that the Google slides are locked. Hmm, tricky. Well, it's a PowerPoint, so it should be, it should open up a download. It should download it for you. Um, but I will, if, uh, I will thank you for letting me know that. I will check this and maybe it's that the file is locked 
um, and that's why you're not able to download. But check, if you click on that link, check your downloads folder. Oh yeah, it just, it just, usually it'll say download, but it just says this file is currently locked. Okay, all right, so I'll make sure I check it. I do have it open here, so let me switch my share and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is just a little thingy. It's gonna walk you through it. Um, you don't have to make any fancy tables. Literally, all you need is a Word document. I think I have, do I have a Word document attached to that? It says, please create a document, type in your answers and save. So yeah, I don't even give you anything fancy. You just need a Word doc to do this. Um, again, here are your state standards. These are all linked. I believe they're active hyperlinks. So you can click and then say open hyperlink and it will actually open the standards for you so you can take a look at them. So that's great. Um, again, here's your ELD standards. Um, if you're someone that's bilingual cross-cultural um, Spanish or um, Southeast Asian uh, language, you can use more, any of those as well. So here's the 10 cents on standard deconstruction. Why does Dr. Drake ask us to do this? Essentially, when you look at your standards, um, every single standard within that standard, it tells you what the knowledge and what are the skills that students need to acquire to be able to understand that standard. Um, you can determine the knowledge and the skills by looking at the standards. Oftentimes the knowledge is framed around information they need to know and it's oftentimes nouns. So things, person, places, or things that are in the standards, that's the knowledge that the children need to learn. The skills, these are the actions that students have to be able to do. So when you look at the standards, the actions are oftentimes phrased as verbs. What do they need to know how to do, okay? So every single standard, there could be multiple nouns and multiple verbs in a standard. So that being said, um, I just like to highlight that the standards, if you, you did your standards on audit, um, some of them are bulky and there's a lot going on, you know, like a lot of nouns, maybe two or three verbs. There's a lot. And some of them are very simple. The PE standards, for instance, happen to be always, not always, but a lot of times it's like there's a skill and this is how they do it. Right. So it's very short and sweet. Um, so that being said, just remember that the standards vary in the amount of information that they have in them in terms of the knowledge and the skills. So here's an example. This is, this isn't my favorite example, but here's a standard. So it says, this is from, um, this is reading inquiry. So it's probably, it should say ELA, reading and inquiry. This says grade level three, standard three. That's what I see there. Um, I like to put dots between them so it makes it a little bit easier for me to tell what standard it is. So describe the relationship between a series of historical events, scientific ideas or concepts. So you can see here, anything that's like a noun, person, place, or thing is highlighted in red. So this is the knowledge that the student is being asked to learn. Again, you don't have to use all of that in your lesson. You can just say like, okay, so we're going to focus on historical events, a series of historical events, particularly, you know, if you're using history, um, maybe it's a, the series of events that led to the Trail of Tears, right? So a series. Now, the skill, if y'all see it up here, is describe a relationship. So I'm going to go here. You can see the skill, it's that relationship. Um, using academic language in language we're asking them to describe a language or describe the relationship and then down here we're asking them to use language okay so here in this standard alone we've got two skills and multiple nouns or pieces of knowledge that we're asking students to learn so essentially right there that's the standard deconstructed right there so i'm really just asking you to take each of the standards you're interested in and take a look at it and say okay where's the knowledge give Dr. Drake a color or whatever, give me a key. So my knowledge is gonna be red or yellow and then in the standard highlight or change the, the font color to reflect that. And then likewise, my skills are gonna be purple or blue or whatever, highlight the skills as purple or blue. 
So the rest of this kind of gives you examples. And like I said, you don't need to do this. It doesn't have to get this fancy where you have um, a, like a, a table. But what I do ask for is that you give me the alphanumeric code to the standard. Right now, just by seeing this, I can tell you that, oh, this is the national NGSS science standards. This is first grade. And then I would go, okay, it's under uh, life science three dash one. So, oops. <laughs> so, um, so what does that look like? Again, these are you know, like it's just doing the same thing for you, doing the same thing, doing the same thing. Um, but let me let me go down. Let me get rid of this for a second. So you can use that. I don't know. Save that. Fine. Whatever. That's fine. I'm down. Where am I still screen sharing? I have to be careful with that. No, I'm not. Okay. No. Um, whoa. Does anybody have a question to ask? I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm going to do, well, here you can see, let me show you again back. Sorry, I feel discombobulated. Back here again. So um, this one specifically is saying in this instance, so like I said, you can use colors, you can use highlighting, you can use color of the font, or you can do like I did here, um, underline the knowledge, bold the skills. And this is really key and I want to point this out to you all. Like I said, some of the standards are bulky and there's a lot in it. And you choose four standards and you could make like six lessons sometimes because there's so much content. So when you're thinking about the standard that you're focusing on, you can cross out the piece that you're not going to address in your lesson. And that is okay. You don't have to address the standards as a whole, right? So for this standard, this is telling you, Dr. Drake got this from HSSCS, that's the History and Social Science Content Standards. I, I don't have a special way of this. I just look at the, t the title page of the standard and I create the acronym based on the standard, right? So if it's in English language development, it'll say ELD. Um, but this just really tells me, so this is a third grade standard, um, 4.2. So here students are asked to discuss the importance of, and so for this lesson I said, well, I'm asking them to discuss the importance of the role of citizens. So there's my knowledge. What is the role of citizens? But not necessarily public virtue. That conversation could take a lot longer and I'm not in for it right now in this lesson. So I cross out that piece that I'm not addressing. Like, likewise, if I continue with this standard, including how to participate in a classroom, in the community, and in civic life. Again, within the, the span of the lesson that I'm trying to come up with and integrate a few other standards, I might not have time to get into civic life. That's a bigger idea. So I'm going to cross out civic life and my lesson is really going to focus on how do we participate in the classroom and the community. Okay, so um, the standards drive what we do, but we also have to be cognizant of the fact that some of the standards we're working with are 10 years old. Some of the standards we're working with are 20 years old. Um, and so you get a little creative license as a teacher, as long as you're using the standards and especially, you know, you're incorporating that ELD standard. Um, if you're doing history and social science, you know, you can pull in math. Or if you're doing science, you can pull in ELA with a reflection, right? You have students write a reflection. So this is who you are as a multiple subject teacher. Um, you are able to pull from these different standards and wrap them up into a lesson that addresses multiple standards at once. Um, I know it sounds like a lot and it may feel overwhelming, but I just want you to remember, just go piece by piece. That's why I'm telling you just this week, deconstruct your standard, okay? Next week, what you'll do is once you have that standard deconstructed, you use that standard to write your objectives. So your objectives, and this is just future talk, we're going to do this next week together, but your objectives are the part that says students will be able to. And so if this was the standard I deconstructed, um, my objective might say students will be able to um, discuss, you can use the verb directly from the standard or you can use another verb that fits a little bit better within the context of your lesson. So students will be able to discuss um, 
their roles as citizens. So it doesn't have to be exactly what the standard says, but your objective is what do you want students to do within that lesson? What are you going to measure to say, did they get it? Okay, and the measurement is your assessment. So how would Dr. Drake assess or measure whether students are able to discuss their role as a citizen? And so that's then the last piece is you choose your assessment, right? So maybe it's gonna be observation. I'm the teacher and I walk around and I observe the conversations that my students are having about their role as citizens. Maybe it's a uh, distance learning. And so rather than, um, I'm not gonna be able to see that they're discussing, um, but maybe I use Padlet and each group has a Padlet that they type into what they think their roles are as citizens. So essentially, I come up with some sort of a strategy or an activity to help me measure whether or not my students are meeting the objective that I've created based on the standard. Okay, so everything when you create a lesson plan, it's alignment. You want it to be like puzzle pieces that go together. Standard, objective, assessment. If I create an objective based on the standard, um, you know, this is my standard, discuss the importance X, Y, Z. My objective is students will be able to discuss their role as citizens, but my assessment is like, um, I want uh, students to give me thumbs up or thumbs down if they understand what we talked about. Does that really measure? Are they able to discuss? Is that measuring it in any way? No. So again, we have to consider that alignment. If you're asking them to do something based on the standard, how are you measuring it, okay? So that's for you as you look forward into what you're planning and what you're thinking about to kind of understand that's where we're going, okay? So think about lesson planning as puzzle pieces that you're putting together based on your standards. Do I have any questions? I did have one. Sure, um, go ahead. I know we talked about some standards being a lot like heavier than others. So is it okay if we pick a standard um, that isn't too wordy, but then we're not really deconstructing it much is so what I'm saying. Um, Cause I know when I've selected standards, there's some that are very cut, clear and dry, mm -hmm. but then I'm not actually deconstructing them for the purpose of the assignment. Does that make sense? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, most, even if it's very cut and dry and simple, and small, you should still be able to see within that standard a skill and some knowledge. There should be, it should be in there um, just by the nature of a sentence. You know? Okay, that's what I mean though. So even if we don't have to necessarily cross something out. Yes, yeah, okay. you don't always have to cross something out, but I want you to know that you have the creative license to cross something out if it's just like a really bulky standard. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I had a question. So it says, please select four subject matter standards for your intended lesson. So are we picking out four? Or are we like, I mean, are we doing four or just one out of those four that we're interested in? You, good question. You are picking four that you are looking to massage and work mm -hmm. with to put into your lesson. Okay. So one of the four needs to be an ELD. ELD. Okay. The other three can be from any other subject matter that your heart desires. Okay. So, right? Got it. Um, and because of the nature of foundations, like I said, um, you can look into highlighting mental health. You can look into highlighting interpersonal connections. You could do a lesson that highlights ethnic identity development. Um, you know, it's really like I want you to lean into your passion and um, pull from things you're learning from this class to create a lesson. Um, and again, some sort of tech that you could teach this from a distance. And, and then so not, it's... Yes, Linda, go ahead. So then I'm sorry, I think I'm just pretty confused. Okay, so it's different subjects altogether. So it's not like if we chose like math, it's not like, um, like different math standards. It has to be like the ELD math science, it has to be different subjects. They or different all, subjects. Okay, yeah. They don't all three have to be different, but uh, so the, the base is one ELD, standard, like one ELD has to be there, right? And then your other three, they could be different 
but they could be like math, math, science, or ELA, ELA, health education. Oh, okay. Or, you know what I'm saying? So you have some flexibility there to use what you want. Um, but I'm not saying like you have to pick one ELD and four math or one ELD and three different ones from D, three different, like I'm giving you flexibility, but I'm not saying like you have to um, do all three the same or all three different. Does that make sense? Her mic was low, but I think she said yes. Okay. Linda, if, if you need more explanation, please let me know. That's what I'm here for. No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know it feels a little, <laughs> ah, it's a little confusing, but don't worry. I think it's just the layout too. I mean, like I'm thinking about the layout because I see that your example standard deconstruction slide, but that's a PowerPoint, right? Yeah but we don't want to do it like that or can it, it could be similar like that but don't we don't have to make it like that you don't have to make it like that if you okay. want you all want some more structure i can give you a document that you're going to do it in but it's literally like you all you need to do is open a word document yeah within that word document paste the standards Bam. that you're interested Bam. in yep Okay. Um, make a little key at the top that tells dr mm -hmm. drake you know what's the knowledge and skills and then just mm -hmm. deconstruct Got it. Uh huh. Now, now sounds much easier. First, I was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> how many?" Yeah. Because lesson yeah. plans, the ones I did in like previous classes, they'd be like two pages, three, four pages. So, but we're yeah. deconstructing, so we're kind of just slimming it yeah. down a little bit. Exactly. Okay. I like to do my lessons in little bits, little bites, and for me, it's very important again to focus on the alignment. Okay, the alignment of the standards, the objectives, and the assessments. So by the time you're done, you might have something that's like two pages long, um, but I'm really, really interested in your alignment and that you kind of understand how to use the standards and pull together standards from different areas. And then like in two weeks, we'll talk about like, how do we support, how do we use strategies that support English language learners? How do we bring in a strategy that supports maybe a student with a disability? But again, piece by piece, little bites.